Hello everybody, this is Mr. Kelly. I'm going to be going over the Microsoft Family Safety part of Microsoft Outlook. So to begin with, if you open your web browser and you type in Microsoft Family Safety, I should say with this that you do need a Microsoft email account to, to use this. I have covered this in another video about how to set one up. So if you have a look at that video on the school website, then that will show you how to create an account. Once you've typed in Microsoft Family Safety, it'll be the first link at the top. So to begin with, I'm going to click on Create a Family Group. It'll then prompt me for my email. So this is my email address that I'm going to put in. my password as soon as you sign in I will then be prompted to add somebody now in this box you're going to add your child's email address if they have an Xbox then Microsoft Family Safety does also cover Xboxes free of charge you can get it to include things like um, other types of phone apart from Windows but that comes at an extra cost so Microsoft Xboxes and Microsoft Windows phones, then this is included in the app for free. So get the email address of your child. So if you don't know it, then ask them for it, get them to type it in. And then you should say, so what role should they have? So you want to click member. So an organizer is basically what your role is going to be in this family group where you can change the settings, the screen time settings. So you want them to be classed as a member. So click next. You'll then be asked to solve a puzzle. Okay, so now what's happened is it's now sent an invite to your child's email address. So this is what your screen should look like now. The next step is to get them to log into their email address and accept your invite. So you can just ask them to do it quickly on their, on their phone, say in the background, or quite a nice feature of this is that if you click, if you click accept now, then it then prompts the login for that email address. So they'll then be asked to enter their password. So if you ask them to enter their password, now as soon as you click sign in, it will then automatically accept that invite. So join now. So now that, that will be where your email will be as a parent. So you are an organizer. You're responsible for setting the family settings, the screen time, things like that, which we'll come on to shortly. And then they are a member. Now, this is what they see. This is all they have access to. So they can manage their own permissions. Okay. Now, I'm going to sign out and sign back in again as the organizer the parent account so this is the screen that should come up so if you click on manage your family you can now see that you've got much more in terms of the options actually available so first thing that you can do is screen time so you can limit the screen time now 
you can set it separately for an Xbox or for a Windows 10 device. What I would recommend is if you haven't already is setting up your, if you do have Windows 10, setting it up so that it's the email that's actually signing in onto the PC rather than an actual, um, what's called a local user. If you're not sure how to do that, then please do get in touch and I'll make a video about um, doing that. It is a default part of Windows 10, so you should be signing in with email anyway. But if not, then please do get in touch and I'll happily do a video about that. So for this, I'm going to set a schedule for the Xbox. So I click on this to enable it and then present it with these options. So where it says max scheduled, what that means is, is that there are no limits at all on this. So if, say for example, I'm happy for them to play all of Sunday, they can have that day themselves. Then Saturday, I'm going to limit it to say two hours. So I'd click two hours. Friday, maybe say one hour. So I'm going to say one hour through the week as a maximum. Now, I can also change what times that I'm going to allow them to have that hour. So as you can see here, the boxes that are in green, this is basically the time frame with which they are allowed to use that hour. So it starts from, in this case, 7 a.m. until 9 p.m. So for example, on Monday, I don't want them to have that actual range of time. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to say that they can have an hour from six o'clock and between eight o'clock. I can then save that. So what this means is, is that they are able to take that one hour limit between six and 8 p.m. So obviously what, what we don't want is them playing to, until say 4 a.m. So you can change this change each of these as you want. If you want to set it for more than one hour, then you can change it there. If you just want them to not have it at all on that day, then you can just click on blocked. So if you click on blocked, then that means on those days, they are not allowed any screen time on the Xbox. For Windows 10, so again, similar you're just going to click on time limit and then whatever you'd like them to have so sunday let's say three hours and i want that between 11 a.m to 2 p.m so i'll keep it as that so as well as this you want to do it all in one go if you click on add time to multiple days in the corner so if it's going to be 11 p.m. to 2 p.m. on the weekend, for example, put that setting and then just tick the days I want to apply that to. And then just need to remove the last one. So with this, you are able to set screen time limits on the Xbox and on the PC. Now, obviously, this is limited to that actual account that we've linked to this um, family safe bit. I have read reports on um, like Microsoft forums about children gaining access to the parent's email. So if your email has got a password that your children know or could likely guess, then it's certainly worth changing that so that it's more secure. Once they've added them, if they do add themselves as an organizer, so they've got the permissions to change the screen time, like we have here, then I would strongly recommend that you do not delete their account. Their Microsoft account on the Xbox is linked to all their achievements that they've got on the Xbox on their games. Um, so it might have quite a negative impact by doing that, um, 
there is a way where you can quite simply just change the permissions. So again, if there are any issues with that, please do get in touch. I'm more than happy to make a video to cover that. Um, as well as this, there's also the option to set things about spending as well as content restrictions. So for example, if you wanna make sure before they buy anything, they need approval, then you click on, or you can leave that off and then choose instead to then get emails. So what they'd need to do is they'd need to go into their account onto settings and turn on activity reporting and history. So to do that, they would need to log in. They would log in. And then here where it says, so if you click on, just go over those steps again, make it a bit more clear. So when they log in or ask them to put the password in, so you can log in, I've got Microsoft family, manage your family. So this again is what they are now seeing. Click on manage permissions for their account. And then it's this part here where it says activity reporting and history. So you need to make sure that that is ticked, that that is on. And then you can also tick this as well about they can now see your location. So once they've done that, then you can sign out. If you sign back in with your account, And then we're gonna go on to more options, content restrictions, spending. Okay, so now you can see this option is now available. So email me when they get stuff. So if they purchase anything, you get an email or alternatively, if they need your permission to buy something, you can then get an email as well when that happens. You can add money as well remotely from here. So it could be um, they do spend say, any pocket money. If, if they do get any, they spend it on um, Xbox games or points or content packs or anything like that. You can then add money through this and you can then look at their purchase history. So what do they actually spend the money on? There's also a content restrictions. So you can allow apps and games rated for and then input the age. So, so we wanted to restrict it to 15. So this is going to apply to the Xbox or if they do have a Windows 10 phone or Windows. If there are any apps that are older than that, then here you can allow specific apps. Lastly as well, the block inappropriate website. Now, obviously a very useful feature the only issue with this is, is that it doesn't actually work well with other browsers. It only works for Microsoft Edge. So for example, right now I'm using Google Chrome, so it's not very effective on other browsers. It's got to be Microsoft Edge, which isn't a very popular browser. So it's, it's a drawback of using this um, service, unfortunately. It's also a find your child option. So, only rarely applicable if they do have a Windows phone, which are quite rare. 